book lovers, it is G-Swizz here and I'm here today to talk about my July 2022 TBR. <laughs> of what I've mentioned in my last TBR video, if you haven't checked out my July TBR video, pretty much I ended up mentioning that I wanted to find new favorites this year. And we are in the lead up to some of my anticipated releases coming out. In terms of sequels, I usually anticipate sequels more than I anticipate new books. I mean, I discover new books during the year, which is awesome. However, when it comes to anticipated releases, I usually anticipate sequels. And we've got a few coming out within the month or within like the monthly period. So I got to do some rereading. I have really got to build myself up for the next books in the series. It looks like we're gonna get two finales and I am not mentally prepared for that yet. I like to go into these things prepared because I like to get the most full reading experience I possibly can. I also got some series that I do want to continue. I've got a never anticipated release on this TBR, so I guess without further ado, I wanted to get straight into this TBR and let you guys know what I'm feeling this month in terms of my reading plans. First of all, I'm gonna start off with manga. I don't have as many manga series, planned to read this month as I did in the previous month. However, there are two series that I primarily want to get to slash continue on with. The first one being one that I want to start and that, my friends, is The King's Beast. I have wanted to read this one for quite some time now. This one definitely gives me some Mulan vibes in a sense that the female protagonist is cross-dressing as a male character in order to take over for someone and they have some secret assassination plan, which is very fascinating. Yes, I've read the first chapter so far and I am intrigued. I've also heard that Rei Toma is also a very much highly acclaimed manga artist and creator. I also want to read a few of their other series. I believe that this is the spinoff to Dawn of the Arcania and they also have written The Water Dragon's Bride. Those are other shoujo series that I do want to get to. I am trying to get into more fantasy shoujo. I have been reading some contemporary shoujo primarily in terms of Yakuza Lover or Imakoi. I have read Rosen Blood, which is paranormal. However, this one seems to be a lot more fantastical and I am very much intrigued in it. I also really love the art style. I cannot wait to continue. I have several volumes on my shelf right now. The second series that I do want to read or rather continue on with is the Chainsaw Man series. Now this series I have been having like lots of fun with. I cannot read one volume at a time. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover this one because volume six kind of looks a little bit suggestive just in case YouTube finds out. When it comes to Chainsaw so man, I can't read one volume at a time. No. I devoured the first volume and then the next morning I had to like continue on with volume two. And then when I read volumes three to five, I just binge read them all in one sitting. I absolutely enjoyed my reading experience of half of Chainsaw Man so far. I want to get to the other half. I don't have volume 10 yet. I believe that internationally volume 10 has come out. However, in Australia, it is set to come out this month. I am just going to predict that I'm only going to get up to volume six to nine this month. Nice. I am enjoying Chainsaw Man so far and I cannot wait to continue this but also to finish the first arc and now we get to the books. So the only romance contemporary that I will be prioritizing this month. I mean I might get to other romance contemporaries eventually. I have read a lot of them this year. However, this month purely I want to dedicate my romance contemporary love to Here for the Right Reasons by Jodi McAllister. I'm so excited! If you guys don't know who Jodi is. Let's rewind back to 2017 when I reviewed Valentine. This is the author of Valentine. Probably my favorite Australian fantasy novel. I absolutely loved Valentine. I don't only love Jodie McAllister as an author. I also love her as a person. She is definitely one of my favorite people ever. I love following her Twitter. I love following her commentary on The Bachelor even though sometimes I don't even follow The Bachelor myself. But I know that she has extensive knowledge about how The Bachelor works based on those tweets. And this romance book is pretty much set in a Bachelor-esque TV show setting. If you guys know me, you guys would know how much I absolutely adored The Charm Offensive this year. And that is another reason why I am so excited for Here for the Right Reasons, because it is pretty much about a character who's not necessarily there for the right reason. But... <laughs> I love the title because it's quite deceiving. I cannot wait to read the story because I know it is going to be hilarious. Jodi, once again, one of my favorite people. I definitely want to support them by reading their book. I have also pre-ordered the audiobook. If you guys have not yet heard of Here for the Right Reasons, I would highly recommend you do check it out. If you want to pre-order it, pre-orders are open. However, I mean, if you want to get it on release day, do that too. I'm so excited to read this to let you guys know how I go with it, but also like it is one of my most anticipated releases of this year. Guys, I never usually end 
anticipate romance contemporaries. I'm getting to the stage of my life where I finally am. However, I've never been this excited for an adult romance contemporary before. I think I'm going to internally squeal a lot while reading this book. Now I want to talk about a book that I am currently reading and I never usually put a book down for a week but in this case I have put a book down for a week. I'm feeling a little bit burnt out slash like reading slumpy. I am slowly getting out of it at the moment but also I've had so much go on in my life but I'm hoping I can get back on my reading kick and continue on with Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. I did not put this book down because it was boring. No. I am through the first quarter of this book and let me tell you it has probably been one of the most entertaining first quarters of a book I've read in a very long time. I mean, I've had very entertaining books, but I reckon if this book is as consistent in terms of being well written and being compelling as it has been for the first quarter, I reckon this book is going to make my favorites list. I am absolutely intrigued by the beginning of this novel. I cannot wait to let you guys know how I feel about it because I would love to wrap this book up and to discuss it. I'd love to talk about it, but I can't do that until I finish it. So this month, I plan to finish Only a Monster. I have started it. It's probably going to be one of the first books I finish this month, hopefully. And hey, you know, that's another Australian author on this list. That's really cool. Now I'm going to talk about some books that I want to reread and read the sequel of this month. So first of all, I'm going to talk about These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. And I do plan to read the sequel, These Twisted Bonds. I checked Goodreads and it said that These Twisted Bonds comes out in July. I don't know if the audiobook in Australia is going to come out the same time. But what I do know is that I'm definitely going to read These Hollow Vows this month. If you guys want to see the original cover, I always have to do this. This is the former Bookish Box Special Edition. There's going to be a new Bookish Box Special Edition cover pretty soon because they decided to go with a new artist and a new aesthetic altogether. But I do like this design, so I'm enjoying this design while I have it. These Hollow Vows was one of my favorite books of last year. I absolutely loved the story. I was so compelled by how the story was paced and where the story took me, and I just absolutely loved the characters. My one critique with it is that we don't follow one character enough and I'm kind of hoping that in these twisted bonds we follow that character being the love interest that I do want our main protagonist to end up with. I want to kind of follow him more and to kind of see his POV. This apparently is a duology. I, I have to accept that. I'm literally having to mentally accept that this is a duology and this is not a full series. This series will not be continued until she mentions something like maybe a spin-off or maybe a continuation. I don't know. I just want to follow Abriella for a longer time, but unfortunately it's going to be a duology, so we're just going to have to live with that. I cannot wait for this series continuation, but also I really cannot wait to reread this book because I had very fond memories listening to this book for the very first time. I listened to it in an entire day. Like, I could not stop listening to it. That's when you know that you found a good book. I was expecting this book to be good. I wasn't expecting it to be great. So, cannot wait for this book, and I'm really hoping that the sequel that's coming out within this next month lives up to the expectations that I have because I have really really high expectations for these Twisted Bonds. The second series that I want to read slash reread in the lead up to the finale, my friends, is the Kingdom of Sand and Sky series. Starting off with The Princess Will Save You, The Queen Will Betray You, and the finale, The King Will Kill You. I am so excited for The King Will Kill You, but I have not yet read The Queen Will Betray You, but I have read The Princess Will Save You twice. And what I can say about this book is that it is absolutely phenomenal. The Princess Will Save You is one of those books that I I just literally cannot get out of my head. I have no bad memories of The Princess Will Save You. This is definitely one of those books that intrigued me from start to finish. I can't stop thinking about how amazing these characters are. I absolutely adore Emma Rande and I love Luca. I love the characters in this book. My goodness. It satisfied the cravings that The Remnant Chronicles gave me. Like, I did enjoy The Remnant Chronicles. However, I'd say that this is a good comp title to The Remnant Chronicles because it has to do with a political marriage and having to run away from a political marriage but it's definitely very different and I love the romantic dynamic between these two characters even though we don't really get to see their romantic dynamic too much because it's a very short book and also the characters are separated from most of the novel but what I like about the story is that you totally buy into the romance when the characters are separated because they will literally fight for each other. The reason why I never read The Queen Will Betray You is because I kind of wanted to wait closer till The King Will Kill You. It's a similar situation to Serpent and Dove for me where I didn't read Blood and Honey when it first came 
came out because I wanted to wait till Gods and Monsters came out. So that is the situation here. I have pre-ordered The King Will Kill You. I'm so excited for that release. It is probably one of my most anticipated releases of the year. Purely based on the first book, The Princess Will Save You. The final book slash series that is on my TBR, this is more of a potential. This is like more of a hopeful. I recently read The Bargainer Trilogy by Laura Falassa. And what I do have to say about that trilogy is that it is one of my favorite trilogies of all time now. And ironically this month, I received my Bookish Box special editions of the Four Horsemen series by Laura Falassa. This is a TBR hopeful. Maybe I might start the Four Horsemen series this month. I don't know, but what I do know is that I do want to read at some point of this year and I do want to read more books by Laura Falassa because she really impressed me with The Bargainer. I understand that this series has a different formula because each of these books follow the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which means that they don't necessarily follow the same storyline. They all have individual storylines. I'm not too sure if they like intersect at some point. They probably do. It's a companion series, essentially. I am very much looking forward to reading this series. Also, I really want to show up how amazing these covers are and oh my goodness, those stenciled edges <laughs> look really cool. Yeah, I'm just like absolutely in love with my editions of the Four Horsemen series. But yes, I'm holding up Pestilence right now because I don't know whether I would devour an entire series. At this point of my life, especially with my work life, I don't know how busy I will be per month. A lot of the time, I do want to put a lot of things on my TBR. However, a lot of the time, I actually have to hold back while I'm filming my TBR videos. But I don't know, sometimes the results surprise me. So we'll see. But if I don't get to it this month, I will get to it eventually. Because this series, I did put on my series TBR for the year. So I'm gonna make it happen at some point. So I guess that's gonna be it for this video today, book lovers. If you happen to stay till the end of the video, leave me the starry-eyed emoji. Because it's the middle of the year, so it makes me feel surprised. If you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers. And also, I have social medias. My Jesus was the books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also at Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash Jeeswizzle. And finally, I'm at TikTok. My Jeeswizzle on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Peace. Did it, I would have, and I flipped it in a double. double.